welcome to another episode of The Deep Dive, in which we take a deeper look at the topic or uh, passage of focus from the weekend sermon, um, riff on it a little bit, discuss it, bring up other questions, uh, do some word studies, explore the text, uh, things we just don't have full time to get into in the sermon, um, but we believe deserves a second look. And so this week, uh, joined again by Chris Bance, our St. Charles campus pastor. Chris, how you doing? Yeah, I'm well. I'm glad to be back. I'm bringing this microphone just a little bit closer to your face. Go for it. There you go. Um, yeah, so uh, we're in our second week of series called What Do I Do With My Life? Mm-hmm. And we're kind of loosely connecting it to the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes. We spent a lot of time last week just kind of big picture who wrote Ecclesiastes. Solomon was our conclusion at like, you know, 95%. Yes. <laughs> um Talked about wisdom uh, as a, a literature, as a genre, and mm-hmm. what what do we do with that, and how do we apply it? And then, um, kind of that first qu- initial question um, was, um, yeah, like where, what, what, am I, what am I doing, right? And then this week we're looking at this question of which way do I go? So we started the sermon with that classic. Robert Frost poem, right? The two paths diverge in the wood. Yes. And I took the one less traveled by. Um, mm-hmm. Man, he's got a good voice. Was that him in the video? Uh, I don't think that was him oh. in the video, but that's how I picture him sounding. <laughs> yes. Like wherever our creative team found that audio from, it feels like him. <laughs> it feels like Just him. Just from what like the pictures you see of him. <laughs> like early 20th century, <laughs> yeah. a little bit pre-Tolkien and Lewis, right? Like that yeah. that era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so uh, the passage, we're in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Uh, we might hit some Colossians, hit some Proverbs as mm-hmm. well. Um, but Chris, before we, we jump in, um, kind of our, our congregation, right? We've got, you know, we have our Mid-Rivers campus and we have our St. Charles campus. And there's some crossover, um, you know, in terms of like some people who have come from the Mid-Rivers campus and now are at the St. Charles campus. Um, there's just, I don't know, there's, it's like a... Anytime I'm out at St. Charles, it feels like an like extended family uh, like reunion because yeah. I, I I know so many people out there. Yet I don't I see them about once a month, not every single week. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I say that to say that oftentimes the the two congregations like most people aren't hearing both messages: the message from Mid Rivers and the message from St. Charles. Right. And yet with our teaching strategy, there is quite a bit of overlap. Mm-hmm. Often in terms of like, okay, hey, we're in the same passage or we're on the same topic, and yet. Uh, the way we do campus ministry, there's quite a bit of contextualization that happens. Mm-hmm. So the different preacher, we're not live streaming the message. It's different preachers in both locations um, using their own illustrations or their own cadence, um, what have you. Mm-hmm. This week, actually, um, was one of those examples of quite a bit of difference between the two um focuses. Uh, ben spent a lot of time just re-exploring this idea of wisdom and why wisdom is good to pursue, um, kind of, and he took that path as a way, you know, no pun intended, as a, as a way to answer the question, which, which way do I choose? Yeah. Um, well, what does wisdom say? Yeah. And, and you took kind of a slightly different approach. Um, I think you were probably more heavy on the wisdom in, in week one, and then this week, you kind of had this real interesting concept, I thought, of, well, maybe the path doesn't actually matter. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, so I think there's there's explicitly the path that is presented to us in the Bible of following Jesus, mm-hmm. to deny yourself, to take up your cross, and to follow Jesus. So that is a non-optional path. Mm. We cannot opt out of that. So in one sense, there is the one straight and narrow. There uh-huh. is the one path in which we walk towards the cross and, and, and we are followers uh-huh. of Jesus. So in, way, in, in one sense, there's one path. In another sense, there's a trillion paths. Uh-huh. Because where you live, where you work, who you marry, what your hobbies are, what your skill sets are, how many kids you have, like these are all going to spider web out into a pretty specific in particular life that's mm. actually located in real time mm-hmm. with real people doing real things. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, there is one way, one path that is Jesus, 
But the gospel also gives us a freedom to particularize our lives in our own locality, mm. and that is going to mean a billion different paths. Yeah. And, and so what I was trying to get at is to say, okay, who you marry, where you work, where you live, like all these things are immensely important. But in all of these things, you can have a cross-shaped life, Mm -hmm. right? Like if Jesus is walking with you on the path and you're following him, that's the most important thing far and away Mm -hmm. than what city you live in Mm. and who your spouse is and what job you work. Because in all of these things, if you're walking with Jesus, they can be God glorifying and, you know, joy overflowing for your life. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, that's what I was trying to get out a little bit, because I do think sometimes we get paralyzed by our individualistic choices being the center of the universe Mm -hmm. and the center of which all else is based on. Um, So we're we're putting too much weight and pressure and anxiety and importance Mm -hmm. on ourselves. Yeah. There's two things that come to my mind. The first is, so several years ago, we had a, a teaching pastor who... Uh, before he was in the teaching role, he was our college pastor. And I was in college and so home in the summers. And then, you know, right after you know, I graduated undergrad, uh, I was, you know, as part of this ministry. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that time of life. There's just a lot of big decisions that you're, you're making. Like, mm-hmm. who am I going to marry? What career am I going to do? And I remember a talk that he did where... Um, he did it all like dramatic, like, but he's like walking on the edge of the stage, like it's a balance beam and like yeah. acting like it was this huge ordeal to just try to stay on the, the single path. And um, the point he was making is that we, t- we tend to take this concept of God's will and we very narrowly define it as a straight line. And if we get off of that beam or off of that line, then oh my goodness, I'm not in God's will anymore. How do I get back on it? Mm -hmm. When in reality, it's probably just a really poor way to understand, um, yeah, that that concept. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's overarching boundaries and limitations and guidelines and missions, Mm -hmm. right? Love God, love people, make disciples. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not getting out of those. Mm -hmm. Um, But within those, whether you're an engineer or an artist or a baker or an athlete or a teacher or a construction worker, like all of these things mm-hmm. can exist within Love God People Make Disciples. Yeah. 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 So that's really good. The second um, thing that makes me think of, uh, I don't know if she listens, so she might not even know I'll say this. Uh, my wife struggles making decisions like about little things like, hey, should I get this backpack or this backpack? Yeah. And it it kills me because it like it agonizes her on like I just I wish I could just make a decision, and I think that's um, even as we uh, think about this week ahead, just do something. Um, that sometimes we just got to take a step and make a decision, and maybe it's going to be the right decision, or maybe it's going to be the wrong decision, but we probably put too much weight and importance in the decision that's ahead of us. Yeah. Um, as well. Yeah, I think so, because Robert Frost is right in his poem, in a sense, is of, of once you choose a path, there is some extent of not being able to take the other path. Like, you chose mm-hmm. a path, right? Mm-hmm. But on the other sense, like, God is at both ends of the mm-hmm. path, and Jesus can walk both of those paths with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we wouldn't say what Frost is offering is untruthful entirely, but we would say it's it's a little bit incomplete. Mm-hmm. And, and actually, the gospel offers us a much more holistic view of the world and of our lives and the freedom we are out, able to live out in the gospel, yeah. um, as long as we're not abandoning any of the core commitments of love God, love people, follow Jesus, deny yourself, take up your cross, make disciples, right? These are the boundaries. These are the, you know, the thick brush of the woods that you're mm-hmm. not, you know, that are keeping you into the the path. Hmm. That's good. Well, let's uh, jump into Ecclesiastes 3. I'm going to read verses 1 through 8, and then we can, uh, yeah, we can talk, a lot, talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, all right, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, verse 1. 
For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. So again, this this falls into that wisdom category, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what's Solomon, what's he getting at here? Yeah. So two things, he's locating us geographically. Mm-hmm. We live on this world, mm-hmm. in this world, and we are under the heavens. We are under the sun. So in our current state, uh, we live in um, a world touched by brokenness mm-hmm. and sin and fallenness. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're located. And then he's also locating us in, in time. So, you know, if you're using Paul's language, it's kind of the the present evil age, Mm -hmm. post-Genesis 3, pre-Revelation 22. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of the age we're located Mm -hmm. in. And so within this, there's a wise way to relate to the broken world around us. Yeah, Um, There is a time to pluck up and there's a time to plant. And you shouldn't plant when you need to pluck up and you shouldn't pluck up when you need to plant. Yeah. So there is a wise way and an unwise way to relate to the world around us in which we live and the time in which we've been placed. Mm-hmm. So he's really helping us out there. He's locating us, and then he's kind of saying, hey, there, there is a better way. There is a wise way which to have a relationship to time, right? Like we talk about – let's think about like this. We talk about having healthy relationships with like food, right? Mm. Like I'm a stress eater. Dude. So I often don't have a healthy relationship. I made some bad choices last <laughs> night. To food. Yeah. Or like 10 p.m. hits and you get Dude. so hungry, you should be going to bed. But it's like, Dude, oh, let's PM, get a snack. 10 p.m. 12 a.m. last night. Yeah. I walk down to the kitchen. I finish off a bag of chips. I see we've got leftover mac and cheese from the kids from lunch. I go, yep. yeah. <laughs> it's bad. It's a bad night. <clears throat> so just like there's a way to healthily relate to food or whatever, there's also a healthy way to relate to our age, hmm. to the time to the, the time we've been entrusted with, the number of our days, there's a healthy, wise way to relate to that mm. as we're placed in the story. Why Why do you think that's so difficult? Hmm. Well, we've got the idol of efficiency, of mm-hmm. everything's got to be right now, effective, and efficiency isn't a bad thing, but when that's the idol... Uh, relating to time wisely with things like relationships and love just kind of flies out the window because everything is sacrificed at the altar of efficiency. Yeah. But also, like, we don't love to number our days, especially for those of us who are younger. It feels like at times we have an eternity in front of us in this life. It seems like we've got a lot of time left on the clock. So we struggle to number our days as well and to kind of own our boundaries and limitations as finite Mm -hmm. creatures, like longing for the eternity moment. Yeah. Yeah. Time is an interesting concept because we use uh, language like I'm wasting time or I'm losing time. Yeah. Like it's this thing. Spending time. Spending time. Yeah. It's like this... um, this currency or a commodity that we can have possession of. Yeah. And the reality is, is, I mean, regardless of what you're going to do, time is just going to go on. Right. Yeah. Like you can't do anything to stop it. It's not like you can bank it up and save it for later. Right. Um, I, you've done some, some traveling, uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see how different cultures approach time. Mm-hmm. Right, like you have like polychronic, you got monochronic kind of uses of time. I've spent some time in uh, spent some time. There we go uh, in uh, Guatemala mm-hmm. at an orphanage called Casa Berna Bay. And Latin America, their culture is a little bit different than ours, and a little more relational in in nature. And uh, the director of this orphanage, his name's Edgar, and have just kind of like a funny little, you know, we call it Edgar time, like Edgar's on Edgar time. 
if you are in his presence, you never question, is he present in this moment? Mm -hmm. Um, If you're not in his presence, you're frustrated because you're waiting on him. But if you know him, you know that he's not like, he's not just, you know, fiddling or wasting time. Like he's, he's investing his, his, his person Mm -hmm. with whomever he's with. Um, I do think that that's something that for us in our culture, uh, you know, we look at the, we look at the, the watch, we count how many, you know, when we say, Hey, something's starting at three o'clock, if you're not there at two fifty, yeah, you're late. Yeah. Whereas in other cultures, you say something starts at three, they're just, they're not lying to you. Mm -hmm. They just approach time very differently and they're not going to, um, they're not going to cause offense to the person they're with because they have to run to the next thing. Yeah. They'll get there when they get there. So the kingdom of God is a funny thing. Sometimes it asks us to ab- completely abandon what we might refer to as efficiency. Mm-hmm. Because Jesus, in this kind of wise moment, tells his audience, um, consider <coughs> the lilies of the field. Yeah. Like, go out and stare at the lilies for a while. Well, if I'm staring at the lilies, I can't answer an email. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's some anxiety in these commands Mm, to observe the created world around us or observe the people around us and to see the inbreaking of the kingdom of God in the beauty of creation. So Jesus, I mean, he's, um, you know, he, he travels through and he talks to and he acts in a way that kind of like, uh, what, what's this guy's name again? Edgar. Edgar. Like, Jesus has Jesus time. Yeah. And, like, I, I think, like Edgar, like, the disciples aren't in his presence questioning, mm-hmm. oh, is this guy thinking about someone else or does he ha- have anxiety about his Google calendar? Mm-hmm. No, like, he's present. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it, it is. It is fascinating. I do think that, um, you know, when you said kingdom of heaven, that uh, that got me thinking. I, I bet the disciples at different moments were frustrated with Jesus. With like, oh, we've got stuff to do. We've got people to heal. We've got yeah. places to go. There's ministry to be done. Jesus is just sleeping in the bottom of a boat. Like, how's that helping? Anything? Or telling people to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I don't know. I, I do think there is something there. Um, when we think about time, last week, you know, you, you talked a little bit about the difference between uh, Kairos and Kronos mm-hmm. time. Can you just uh, refresh that again? Yeah, so Kronos time is kind of like the seconds in a minute. It's a relating to time that is efficient, and it's to say to be wise to Kronos time is to be very punctual Mm -hmm. and to have your calendar in line and all that. And Kronos time is always ticking away. Kronos time is it's here and then it's gone. That's the it's the clock. Whereas Kairos time is more of a an age. It's more of a being. It's more of a present moment. Mm -hmm. It's it's more of a relating to time and the gift of existence and being that God gives us more than watching the seconds yeah. on a clock. Um, so like Colossians 4, right? When it says, hey, walk wisely towards outsiders in the time that you've been given. Mm-hmm. That's to say like in your moment, not so much seconds in the minute, but in your moment, how are you relating towards outsiders? Mm. That's uh, great. Yeah. That's great. Um, Chris, when I was in seminary, and we went to the same seminary, so you were probably told this too, Mm -hmm. um, had professors that would say, hey, for some of you, uh, to get an A in this class, like, you might be sinning. And then for others, if you don't get an A in this class, you might be sinning. I don't know. I think that's a great principle even for how we approach time because at essence what they're saying is, hey, some of you, like, this is your main thing, and you've been gifted with a mind. You should be doing everything you can to be doing as well in this class as possible. And you're not the end of your education. This is going somewhere. Um, but for others, you have a family and you have a job. And if you're going to be doing well in this class, that means you are sacrificing something somewhere else that you shouldn't be. Yes. Um, I wonder if, you know, we think about things like money, um, actually, mostly money. Uh, like when we get to heaven, I I wonder what kinds of words God is going to have for us 
regarding time Mm -hmm. and the choices we've made. Yeah, it's a little bit scary, isn't it? Yeah. Because on one on one hand, like we're warned in the wisdom literature and by Solomon to not be sloth like. Yeah. Like to be diligent. Yeah. Like the ant stores up the food in the good season mm-hmm. for winter. But on the other hand, I actually think the bigger idol for m- the majority of us in America is actually the inability to say no. Mm-hmm. And so it's not that our time isn't put towards good things, but it at times takes us away from great things. Yeah. And that's a real sad thing. Yeah. Isn't that fascinating? You just said that our greatest idol might be our inability to say no. Mm-hmm. And yet it's probably also our inability to say yes. Mm-hmm. Right on both yes. hands. It's like yeah. the 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 fear of commitment, and also the fear of missing out, and we live in this tension of in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, because once you're saying no to one thing, it's probably because you're saying yes to something else. Yeah. So well, it the, requires you to say yes to something else because cr- because Chronos time is so finite mm-hmm. that. The seconds are just ticking away. They're being eaten away. Like 10 seconds ago, like we don't get that second back. Yeah. So Kronos time does inform limitations and boundaries. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, Chris, thanks for this conversation. Yeah. Um, again, you can find this resource and more on our website, calvary.church slash what do I do um, or calvary.church slash resources. Again, uh, if you have any questions that you'd love um, to see us or other teaching pastors discuss in future episodes, you can shoot us an email at podcasts at calvary.church. We will connect with you again next week as we uh, just jump into week three of what do I do with my life and uh, look forward to catching you again then. See you guys. Thanks for listening to The Deep Dive a Calvary Church Media Productions podcast. Be sure to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts.